வணக்கம் குட் ஐ பிளீஸ் கால் ஸ்ரீ கஞ்சன் குப்தா தி எடிட்டோரியல் டிரெக்டர் ஆஃப் நிதி டிஜிட்டல் டு இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் தி புக் டாக்டர் மன்மோகன் சிங் அ டி கேர் ஆஃப் டி கே டாக்டர் சுப்பிரமணியம் சுவாமி குருமூர்த்தி ஜி ராமமூர்த்தி ஜி நம்பி நாராயண் ஜி அண்ட் ஆல் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஹூ ஹவ் கேதர்ட் ஹியர் டுடே அ வெரி குட் மார்னிங் டு யூ ஆல் I was just asked by Guru Murthy Ji, what am I doing here? Um, a good question, a Bengali who works in Delhi, what's he doing in Chennai? Um, the reason I'm here is that uh, uh, M.R. Venkatesh, uh, who has authored this book, he has uh, done signal service. for the past 10 years while uh, while everybody was commenting on how sonia gandhi is running down the country i and some of a very few of my colleagues were trying to focus on how manmohan singh is running down the country as prime minister it was his responsibility to mind the national interest it was his responsibility to look after india's interest he was not the prime minister of congress he was not the prime minister of sonia gandhi he was prime minister of india and somehow he forgot or he chose to forget this simple fact and that's why if we consider 2004 2014 to be a to be a decade of decay he alone or he primarily is responsible and he must be held accountable for it he cannot say that he was just playing regent while the queen and the prince decided for him what is to be done it was for him to take that decision it was for him to take that call and it's on it's not only now that when the economy has started faltering and the rupee is in free fall and we are all going to feel uh, the after effects of it jobs are going to disappear they have already started disappearing prices are going to shoot up especially food prices your cost of living is going to multiply several times it's only now that we are beginning to feel the effect of the decay but more importantly the decay the decade of decay has been felt in other crucial areas and here is a prime minister who has continuously misled parliament on very crucial foreign policy and security issues he has never been forthcoming on the india us nuclear deal whatever we we may think of the deal whether it is right wrong but he never took the country into confidence he never felt the need to take the country into confidence if you go through parliamentary records you will find that he has successively again and again repeatedly misled parliament while the deal was being negotiated we will see the same thing on india pakistan relations he never opens his mouth and when he opens his mouth he does it deliberately to mislead he does it deliberately to tell half truths or misleading truths on friday the prime minister made a statement in the rajya sabha on the state of the economy it, it it was a very banal explanation of what's gone wrong we all know what's gone wrong but in the course of making that statement he wanted to know in which other democracy is a prime minister accused of being a chore a thief 
It's not a very nice thing to happen. No prime minister should be accused of being a thief. After all, he holds an office which represents the sovereignty of India. But why has it happened? He has devalued that office. He has demeaned the office. A prime minister is not only supposed to be in office, he is supposed to be in authority, he is supposed to be in control. He is supposed to lead from the front. Mr. Manmohan Singh has done none of these things. A counter question could be asked, in which other democracy does a prime minister reduce himself to being a doormat of his political leader? This country has had several prime ministers, some good, some bad, some even tyrannical. But nobody was so supine, nobody was so devoid of a backbone. And this is something which the people need to realize. This is something which we all need to realize. Governments come, governments go. But can we as a nation afford to have yet again another Prime Minister like Mr. Manmohan Singh? That is a question which each one of us should ask. Uh, those who spoke before me, they pointed out the devaluation of institutions. Institutions have been devalued over a period of time. But what has never been devalued is the idea of government, the concept of government. Uh, when we joined journalism, we, we were taught words to use. One of the words which we were taught was authority. Authority symbolizes power, it symbolizes control, it symbolizes a leader's grasp over the situation. So when you use the word authority, you don't have to use the word government, you do not have to use the word constitution, you do not have to use the word uh, legal uh, authority. It, it is all encompassing. That was 30, <coughs> 30 years ago. Today, if you look at the word authority, it means nothing. We are not governed, we are ruled. We are ruled by people who stand behind the throne. And the person who occupies the throne is so unworthy that he cannot even stand up and say, no, this far and no farther. And that's why I am here. I am here because what Emma V has done is that he has brought together the big, big picture why this has been a decade of decay. And it's very tragic because economic downturns come, we get out of it. Yes, of course, we will get out of it. The girl, I mean, the Prime Minister's attitude is really, okay, we messed it up, now it's your problem, go solve it. We'll take the temple gold, we'll sell the gold, we'll somehow make, make do, I mean, you know, stuff happens. But what's frightening is that we seem to be caught in a cycle. If you just look back and if you just go back in time, it is so frighteningly similar to the decade between 1980 and 1990. Political abuse of power, creating social friction for votes, making the Hindu feel besieged in his own country, letting the economy go for a toss, encouraging states to fight among themselves, eroding federalism, reducing the majesty of the constitution. It's all happening, it's all happening all over again. And what 
is really deeply saddening. And I say this with no rancor. I don't expect Sonia Gandhi to feel for India. I genuinely don't. If I had been in her place in a foreign country, perhaps I would, I would also have been equally indifferent. But definitely I believe that Manmohan Singh should have felt for India. And that he has spectacularly failed in displaying that he feels for India. There is no sincerity in his approach. I can, I can accept a bad prime minister who is sincere, who is genuine in his conviction and yet fails. Failure happens. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you fail. But here it is a combination of two. It is insincerity on one hand and on the other hand it is a feckless person, a person who is genuinely incapable of discharging the responsibilities of the office he holds. Somebody very famously described him as an overrated economist and an underrated politician. We don't need, we don't need such people. I write a Sunday weekly column for the Pioneer and this morning's piece was on Manmohan Singh's speech in the Rajya Sabha and I ended it with saying, no punishment would be enough for him. What he has done is he has dragged down the country. He has dragged down the country in terms of the economy, in terms of its social structure, in terms of its political institutions, in terms of its stature in the committee of nations. We are, we are not really where we were 10 years ago. Uh, my other senior speakers over here, they will deal with it in greater detail, I'm sure. I don't want to take up more time. I'm, I'm sure you would want to listen to them, but I would strongly urge you to read MRV's book and spread the word that the enemy is within and unless you fight the enemy within, you cannot fight the enemy outside. Thank you very much. Thank you.